Hello, Terrans, and... <laughs> oh, and welcome to a new series fully dedicated to KDE development news. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> On these series, I'll cover the GNOME development of around the last seven days, and it will be like core development. Pretty much whatever big happens on GitLab. Won't be community projects, won't be social news, just merge requests and code. I hope I'll be able to upload three, four of those each month, or maybe more, who knows? If you find wrongs or things I missed, please put them down on comments and I will correct them on the next episode. Like, um, a special section. This is what I screwed last week. All right, let's do this. This week, we had the release of glib2 79.1, that's what will become 280, and it fixes around 50 bugs. There is also a merge request by Thomas Holler, adding a private data field to each G object instance and using it to store optional flags and bit locks. This would allow replacing the global mutexes that are currently used to protect various G object operations, such as weak references, toggle references, notify queue, and closure array with per-object bit locks that reduce contention and overhead, and eventually will improve the performance. There is also a continuation with various builds and API changes after the massive 279 release that moves libg repository into glib and closes hundreds of issues in the way. Speaking of API breaking, G repository was renumbered from version 2 to version 3 for solving a conventional mismatch between the library and the data file, which accidentally happened six years ago. Benjamin Ott added subpixel positioning to GTK's new GPU renderer, which makes glyph rendering match the Cairo and GL renderers. Matthias closed a bug with NVIDIA's that could get the cursor missing on GL context, for example, when typing on terminal or the text editor. He also added an ability for node files to request custom fonts by passing a URL to a local file. And then he pushed some changes on node editor, included an option for disable or enable the auto-updating, that last week, glib and gtk had an excellent activity, with more than 100 commits by Benjamin, Matthias, Emmanuel, Philip Withnall, and Philip Shimento, and a few more, that were mostly code improvements and tests. And while GNOME is closing down to a beta release, you can't expect super new features. This merge request removes an assumption that the refresh rate is fixed in the current handling of empty frames, which helps for getting a variable refresh rate support to the compositor. Most specifically, this encapsulation is important for upcoming changes to support empty frame handling with VRR, which in turn should fix frame pacing in Firefox based on recent tests. This issue tracks VRR progress. Basically, nothing has been merged yet, but the work continues on affected modules. We'll be ready for GNOME 46 in March? Um, highly unlikely. That's most likely to be merged, and this MR fixes several long-standing issues with DND, motion compression, and tablet touch input, and removes some obsolete code. Daniel Van Vucht pushed new patches two days back for fixing the issues that were preventing GPU copies on the NVIDIA proprietary driver. That can potentially solve the bug that your second monitor gets extremely laggy with NVIDIA driver. Note that the merge request is still open, but it should be included downstream on Ubuntu, and of course, if you face similar troubles, you can apply it and see if it helps. This merge request aims to fix a bug that caused the input method state to be flushed before handling key events, resulting in disorderly event emission. It's basically a race condition that a key press can wrongly occur before another one. So if you think that typo was your fault, maybe it wasn't after all. Um... Unfortunately, there has nothing big happened in Gnome Shell the last seven days, neither cool commits or new merge requests. So let's gossip instead, and there is lots to gossip about with this commit that adds the text editor on favorite apps. For start, it seems there is nothing wrong with it, but are you completely sure? Like, um, completely, completely sure? Okay, look, the reason they put that there was because the dash was feeling too empty after a clean installation in Fedora, that tries to be as close as possible with the upstream configuration. Same with Arch Linux, by the way. So that's the upstream dash on GNOME OS. We have Epiphany, Calendar, Music, Files, App Store. And from now on, we'll have the text editor, too. What's wrong? Uh, well, what the hell music does here? Apart the fact that nobody will launch a music player on a new installation, do you have any idea how awful GNOME music actually is? 
Nope, you don't, because it's so bad, you ain't using it to even know how bad it really is. And then is this eternal denial to pin the terminal on Dash by default. And it's a fundamental denial of how the GNOME lead designer treats the project. Um, to remind you, it's still a desktop in case you forgot. To defend Alan, though, it's perhaps because GNOME has so many upstream terminals nowadays they can't pick what to pin. Hashtag sarcasm. This week, Philip released GNOME JS 1.792. It's a small release, but it brings performance improvements in accessing G-Object properties. This contribution is by Marco Trevison that also works in follow-up patches for further code improvements. This week, GNOME settings received some small UI enhancements, for example some ports to Adwaita switch rows, and some missing mnemonics. There is also a change on About panel to always display the correct version of GNOME independently from distros info. All right, Adwaita Widgets 1.5, so we have a new widget, aka Adwaita Dialog, that supports various features such as bottom sheets, swipe gestures, close requests, and adaptive sizing, depending the device orientation and size. Obviously, the current GNOME 46 apps don't have the time to use it. The merge request is still open anyway, but assuming it will be on SDK 46, the community app developers will have access to it. Antonio Fernandez this week worked on various code improvements, mostly on the list view of files. But he's also working on this merge request that basically is a redesign of how views load the data. Okay, there is a lots of going on in files on this cycle, and I will cover everything another time, but for now, can I please show you what this MR fix is? So if we open a location with lots of files, for example, USR bin, and we try to switch between the views, files every time will try to reload the files, even if it's basically the same files. This patch can fix that too. And so, that was a tiny sneak peek of GNOME development news for this week. As always, don't miss to read the pinned for extra drama. Bye-bye!